Thank you very much, sir. Uh, today's session chair, uh, the chairman of the National Maritime Foundation, uh, distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to you all. As you know, I have been assigned to speak on the role of fisheries, aquaculture, and management of fish stocks. And I'm sure most of the admirals are here, and we are not very good at catching fish. But anyway, I will give it the best shot, as was told by the earlier, suggested by the earlier chair. You know. Let's see where we can take it. <clears throat> as you can see in this uh, slide, the total wealth of the oceans, whatever has been so far assessed, amounts to almost US dollar 24 trillion. And that's what is the assessed one. There are all also other ecosystem services which could not be assessed as of now. And out of this 24 trillion US dollar, only 2.5 <coughs> or maximum 3 trillion dollar are being used by various countries. So in terms of economy, if you see, the, the first country is the US as far as the GDP is concerned. Ocean comes as the seventh largest economy of the world. Seventh largest economy of the world. That means there are the gross marine products totally amounts to almost $3 trillion uh, every year. And the ocean, of course, as you can see, it comes directly. There are some direct outputs, like marine fisheries, seagrass, corals, etc., etc. We get a lot of direct outputs. And there are also indirect, like transport services, ports, any other infrastructure you have. And, of course, there are intangible services as well from the ocean area. Ocean as a part of the blue economy because there are a lot of economic benefits. It comes in the, in my part, it comes in the form of food security from fisheries and also it provides nutrition. The lot of pharmaceuticals and cosmetics also comes from here. But also there are non-economic benefits as well because the ocean, as you have heard by this time, it recycles a lot of nutrients as well as waste material. There are cultural and aesthetic views of the ocean, ocean as well. If you go on with the animal sourced product food consumption by the region, then you will see that in, in, in Asia, there are a lot of fish consumption. China, of course, is the largest one, almost 40% they, they consume the fish. Other areas, of course, you can see the fish consumption slightly less. Uh, they eat more, more of uh, meat and beef. So in the world today, produces about 4 billion tons of food per year. Out of that, only 4% comes from the aquatic animal. That is only 160 million tons. That is in terms of fish and other resources comes from the sea. And these are various types of aquatic food, as you all know. So overall growth in the requirement of fish is increasing. Red areas in the slide indicates where you would find the fish eating people. That means we find most of them in Asia, and then, of course, Africa, and only a very little portion in South America. These are the fish eating areas, but the demand is, of course, uh, increasing. So it, we can see here a, a, a study from to 2008 or 8, 9, <coughs> then in 2014. The production of fish has come around 167 million tons. That, of course, includes capture as well as uh, uh, culture fisheries. And the consumption, of course, is around 146 million tons. Mm -hmm. Rest 20 million tons are used in various uses. But this almost ensures 20 kg per capita uh, consumption of fish in most of the areas where they consume fish. This actually says clearly uh, the, this blue portion is the aquaculture production and the, and the yellow portion is the capture fisheries. So you can see the capture fisheries is almost 50% plus and the aquaculture is almost 47% plus. Closing to make the gap or trying to be equal with the, with the capture fisheries. In the capture fisheries, of course, there are, in the uh, culture fisheries, there is, of course, inland fisheries as well. It is not only marine. Marine is only 23%. Rest of it comes from the uh, inland culture. Like in inland culture, of course, uh, in this area, China produces almost 61% of the culture fish, mm -hmm. and followed by uh, India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, we also do but it is only 2 to 3 percent or 4 percent. China produces 61, rest of the Asian countries about 31. That means 91 percent of the culture fish production is in Asia. The rest of the whole world produces the 9 percent or 8 percent plus. Of course, in the, in, in the uh, export, if you see in the export quantity, 
There's the production. You can see the production in the down below uh, the whole part range, about 167 million tons. And out of that is almost uh, 60, 60 million tons are exported from all these countries. On the other hand, if you see in this one, then 80 percent of the fishers actually comes from Asia. That big portion of blue portion, all the motorized fisher vessel actually originates from Asia, not in many other countries, very less. So 80 percent of the fisher actually lives in the developing countries like us, India or China or in Indonesia, Thailand and other countries. The fish and nutrition, that's a very important factor. And you know that it is a very good, fish is very good for optimal brain and neural system development of the children. And that has been uh, actually, uh, there has been a study by FAO, and it is the figure from there. Two fish meals per week, or 15 kg per year, is a must. That actually helps every human being to nutritionally develop. Because in the world today, there are 250 million children worldwide under risk of vitamin deficiency. And almost, almost 200 million people have got it. With 20 million have learning difficulties because shortage of iodine, especially in the in the northern belt of even India or Bangladesh and other other countries. So with small fish, of course, more nutritious than the big fish. There has been a lot of studies. If you have, like in Bangladesh, we say this darkina, small fish with flour and everything, it gives much more cal calorie. 422. Uh, calories are produced with, uh, with a very small display. But the problem here today is that these days youngsters don't like fish, whether it's small or big. It's not our answer. Of course, there is also a difference from marine and freshwater fish. Marine water fish, yes, it catches a lot of money than the freshwater. There is also a difference. And there is also high value. If you see this on the left hand side, they are very high value fish. And this normal fish we culture, these are actually not very high value. And also here, the exportable ones, of course, the shrimp earns more money than the normal other fish we have in the countryside. And there is also another factor, whether we are culture, we have culture fish in the industrial scale or in a small scale. Countries like, you know, Bangladesh and other in this part is mostly on the in small scale fishes. We do not have industrial scale. But in some of the African countries, yes, uh, they have developed industrial scale, just like China, and Indonesia, and Thailand. If we look at the broader picture, by next 15 years of time, 2030, the fish requirement will increase because of the increased population to around 250 million tons. So that means right now it is about 160 million tons. We will require another 100 million additional tons <coughs> to feed these people with protein and everything. So if we go there, then what you see, that from 160 to go to 150 or 100 million tons, around 63 plus million tons of food will have to come, fish will have to come, and that is not going to come from the capture fisheries. We expect only 10%, that will just to come from the culture. So the countries like Bangladesh and other developing countries in the Asian region, that is our bait that we must aim for, increasing our culture fish by another 60 plus million tons within the next 10, 15 years, because the market is open and it is coming up. So bridging the gap, we need to do, and that's where our planning must start, that we have to sustain the aquaculture growth, and that we can also do by uh, reducing the fish waste. There is a lot of waste now. This is open water culture. It's done by many of the countries in Asia, including um, you know, Indonesia, Thailand, China, but Bangladesh, we have not started as of now. Open water culture, that actually minimizes the use of fresh water, in the, like in the Indian culture. Of course, uh, you know, the big fishes, even in Australia, they are, they are cultured fish like this in, in underwater through case culturing, they call it. Uh, salmon, even the salmons are not being caught from the rivers now or from the mouth of the bear. They are all cultured like this. But we are, in this part of the world, we are yet to start this. This long liner fishing, which is actually hook fishing, we also not much started in this part of the world. And this is the most eco-friendly, actually, ways of catching fish. Even the big tunas of 50, 60 cases can be caught with this type of long liner fishing. But we are not there as yet. So aquaculture, however, is a very highly complex sector because the environment and transboundary nature. And there are over 500 species so far have been uh, outlined. And there are different habits. 
of course, food habits are also different. Production system is different. Production practices are different. So if we want to continue the sustain of this, then we have to improve genetics, management, biodiversity, and also the food and other aspects we have to look after. And reducing the waste. Right now, it's around 50 to 20 percent fish is wasted because the, the trawler, they go to the sea, they only keep the prime catches, others they are actually thrown apart. So that we need to reduce because otherwise, you know, this is spoiling the sea and also uh, we are not getting the service. And part of the blue economy, yes, uh, is optimizing the resources efficiency, increasing contribution to elevating poverty, food and nutrition security, that is very important, and also environmental and social performance, which already have been discussed in the morning session. Here you can see established and emerging food ocean industry. And the top is, you can see the capture fisheries, seafood processing. That means these are the two top industries which have come up. And on the right hand side, if you see what are coming up, is the marine aquaculture, of course, that is the only one. Rest actually uh, involves the other type of industry, whatever we have. And in this picture, I'm sorry, probably you can't see it very well. It has been already assessed that the aquaculture will increase by almost 303%. So that will also give a lot of employment opportunities for the people, as well as the captured fisheries. Uh, there is a lot of increase in the next 15, 20 years. There are factors which are influencing the management of stocks. The people are increasing. They are going and they are catching fish randomly. This is a big problem for us. And because, as I said, by 2050, 9 million people will be there. And overfishing, which is already been done, bottom fishing, which are actually destroying, destroying fishing areas. So that's an important aspect. And other one is environmental impacts. We really do not know much, but we have to probably find out. If we see, like in this slide, yes, it is very water is blue, but then underneath you have a lot of plastics and other which are actually not helping for producing the seafood out in the sea. So ocean environment is a very important factor. We have to look into. And the difficulty here that ocean and land Based governance, it is different. Water is different, land is different. And as you can see, some of the factors here, and that's why probably, and humans do not live on the ocean. That's an, another difficulty. That's why, even if we say that it is to be better managed, sometimes we cannot do it. So there are challenges to the management of uh, uh, these fish stocks. The one of them is freedom of the high seas and IUU fishing, that is illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing, because in the high seas, it is all free. Everybody can catch fish. And there are hardly ships there, you know, you can't see. And there is also a problem of maritime security and safety, which is being discussed here uh, in detail to the time. Then international cooperation on the high seas is not always there. There are regional fisheries management organizations under the FAO, but you don't find much of a very effective cooperation <coughs> there. And exploitation of marine resources, how it is going to be done. There is no, actually there are conventions, but then you don't find it that they are being complied with every time. So that's why there are a lot of complexities among the stakeholders. That means we need policy and governance, marine special planning, then better use of scientific data, technology, knowledge, experience, economic analysis, then compliance of international and national conventions, so that we can have the sustainable development of marine resources. That's a must. Until and unless we do this, it will be difficult for effective ocean management, and that is to ensure the fish as a whole, in the table, as a protein, as a nutrition, <coughs> as an employment provider. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.